Hello students. So in the last session we have discussed about a linear phase FIR filter characteristics. Okay. Now we will see the frequency response of linear phase FIR filters. The frequency response of FIR filter is nothing but we have to do the Fourier transform its Fourier transform of its impulse response that is after doing the Fourier transform of h of n I will get h of omega or h of e power j omega so frequency response ok so we have to do the magnitude function and the phase function magnitude and the phase function is nothing but frequency response so depending upon the value of n either even or odd and depending upon the type of symmetry there are totally four types of impulse response for li linear phase FIR filters are exists okay so if it is symmetry then there, there will be two fun two chances an even and odd if it is anti-symmetry then there will be two chances again even or so totally four types of impulse responses are present so now I am discussing one type and you have to go through remaining three times I will give you PDF guys okay so first the frequency response of linear phase FIR filters when impulse response is symmetrical and I am considering n is odd. So next case will be symmetrical only but n should be even. Third case anti-symmetrical n odd. Fourth case anti-symmetrical n even. Okay. So first case is symmetrical n is odd. So what is the transfer function of FIR filter? So finally transfer function I am writing directly n is equal 0 to n minus 1 of FIR filter h of n z power minus n. So it's Fourier transform I am doing. So h of omega or h of e power j omega I can write. So generally here the limits should be minus infinity to plus infinity but I am writing n is equal 0 to n minus 1 because it is a finite impulse response it is having finite number of non-zero terms. So it is n is equal 0 to n minus 1. So if n is odd and the symmetric impulse response and what is the condition symmetric impulse response h of n is equals to h of n minus 1 minus 1 and it is symmetrical about alpha is equal to n minus 1 by 2 alpha or here I am taking the limit small n so n is symmetrical about n minus 1 by 2 here n is odd ok so for example I am splitting this function into three terms so like this h of omega is equal to summation n is equal to 0 to n minus 3 by 2 h of n into e power minus j omega n plus this summation here no need to write middle term n minus 1 by 2 into a power minus j omega n minus 1 by 2 and here again summation n is equal to n plus 1 by 2 to n minus 1 into h of n into e power minus j omega n. So how I am splitting this equation means for example I am considering here n is a odd number so I will write just odd term, any odd term I can consider, you can consider. So n is equal to 9 I am considering. So here this summation is converting into or splitting into 3 terms. Okay. So n is equal to 9 means first limit should be n is equal to 0 to 6 minus, sorry 9 minus 3, 6, 6 by 2, 3. So first limit is from 0 to 3 and the middle limit or middle term n minus 1 by 2 9 minus 1 8 by 2 4 next third term is having 9 plus 1 10 by 2 5 5 to 9 minus 1 8 5 to 8 so n is equal to 9 
and the limits small n is equal to 0 to n minus 1, right? The limits in 0 to n minus 1. So, 0 to 3, 4, 5 to 8, 0 to 8, same only. Just instead of one summation, I am writing three terms, okay? Now, just I am concentrating only on the particular third term. So, I want to change the limits. Changing the limits of third term such that I will get the same limits of first term. So, I want to change the variable from small n to small m. So, by considering small m is equal to n minus 1 minus n such that small n is equal to what I will get n minus 1 minus m. So, if n is n plus 1 by 2 and if n is n minus 1 take the limits if n is equal to n plus 1 by 2 what is m m is equal to what n minus 1 minus n plus 1 by 2 okay so i will get n minus 3 by 2 here m is equal to n minus 1 minus n minus 1. this one minus this one will give us 0 so what are the limits i am getting 0 to n minus 3 by 2 0 to n minus 3 by 2. So, h of omega, first term will be same, second term will be same, the third term limits are changing from 0 to n minus 3 by 2. So, actually if n is equal to n plus 1 by 2, I am getting n minus 3 by 2. The limits are from n minus 3 by 2 to 0. But summation limits we can change upper to lower, lower to upper. Okay. So the limits are n is equal to 0 to n minus 3 by 2 h of n e power minus j omega n first term same h of n minus 1 by 2 into e power minus j omega n minus 1 by 2 second term same. Third term limits are changing from n is equal to 0 to n minus 3 by 2 into h of n e power minus j omega n. But here what is n? I am changing the variable from n to m, right? So instead of n, you have to write n is equal 0 to n minus 3 by 2 h of n is nothing but n minus 1 minus m into e power minus j omega n minus 1 minus m. Okay, now I am changing the variable m to n. Okay, here the limits are m is equal to 0 to n minus 3 by 2. Okay, so just simply I am changing the variable small m to small n such that first two terms are same. Second term will have n is equal 0 to n minus 3 by 2 h of n minus 1 minus n e power minus j omega n minus 1 minus n. Okay. So now h of omega is equal to the equation Okay, I am writing total equation n is equal to 0 to n minus 3 by 2 h of n e power minus j omega n plus h of n minus 1 by 2 e power minus j omega n minus 1 by 2 plus summation n is equal to 0 to n minus 3 by 2 h of n minus 1 minus n e power minus j omega n minus 1 minus n. Okay. So here we know that the symmetry condition h of n is equal to h of n minus 1 minus n and this is replacing here. Only third term I am writing summation n is equal to 0 to n minus 3 by 2 into h of n e power minus j omega n minus 1 into e power minus j omega minus n. I am writing splitting these terms n minus 1 minus n. Okay. 
for further simplification. So here I will take common term as e power minus j omega n minus 1 by 2. If I take e power minus j omega n minus 1 by 2 as common, I will get only h of n minus 1 by 2 in the second term. Consider first term n is equal 0 to n minus 3 by 2 into h of n will be same e power minus j omega n taking minus common term. So, I will get e power plus j omega n minus 1 by 2 here plus summation n is equal 0 to n minus 3 by 2 here h of n into e power minus j omega n minus 1 into e power minus j omega into minus n into e power plus j omega because minus I am taking common I have to multiply it with plus such that these two will be gets cancelled I will get same term e power j omega n minus 1 by 2. So now just do these two term simplification do not write all these things I am not writing all these things just I will do the simplification this term and this term ok. So first simplification of e power minus j term and e power plus j omega term these two are multiplied e power j theta. So if exponential terms are multiplied means this power can be added. So I can write e power I am taking out the common term that is e power j omega. So I will write it as n minus 1 by 2 minus n this term ok just e power j omega n minus 1 by 2 minus n. Now simplify this term ok take e power minus j omega common e power minus j omega common then I will get here n minus 1 here minus n minus j omega minus n minus j omega common minus n will remain and here minus j omega will be there means minus j omega taking common means minus n minus 1 by 2 will be remain. So after simplification what I will get e power minus j omega here minus n plus n minus 1 minus n minus 1 by 2. So I will get n minus 1 by 2 here right minus n will be there 1 minus 1 by 2 will get only 1 by 2 like this. So this is a third term. I write all these things in the equation h of omega is equal to e power minus j omega n minus 1 by 2 and h of n minus 1 by 2 plus taking summation n is equal 0 to n minus 3 by 2 into h of n as common. So second term what I am getting e power j omega n minus 1 by 2 minus n third term e power minus j omega n minus 1 by 2 minus n ok these two terms are same. So finally I can write it as e power minus j omega n minus 1 by 2 into h of n minus 1 by 2 plus summation n is equal 0 to n minus 3 by 2 into h of n e power j theta plus e power minus j theta can be written as 2 cos theta and theta is n minus 1 by 2 minus n into omega. Now I want to change the limit small n to some k ok by considering k is equal to n minus 1 by 2 minus n then what is small n n minus 1 by 2 minus k 
and what are the limits I am having n is equal 0 once n is equal to n minus 3 by 2 if I substitute n is equal to 0 here okay I will get k is equal to n minus 1 by 2 if I substitute n is equal to n minus 3 by 2 here I will get k is equal to 1 okay so now just substitute these limits in the equation final equation is h of omega is equal to e power minus g omega n minus 1 by 2 h of n minus 1 by 2 plus summation the limits are from k is equal to 1 to n minus 1 by 2 into h of what is small n n can be written as n minus 1 by 2 minus k n minus 1 by 2 minus k into 2 cos what is n minus 1 by 2 minus n can be written as k omega ok so this is the final equation this is a final equation or simply you can replace now k with the small n replace k with the small n so what is equation you will get e power minus j omega n minus 1 by 2 into h of n minus 1 by 2 plus summation n is equal to 1 to n minus 1 by 2 h of you will get 2 here because here I am having 2 so 2 h of n minus 1 by 2 minus n okay because okay into cos n omega okay so this is total function here as h of omega can be written as magnitude and phase here this will become magnitude and this is a phase term e power minus j theta of omega e power minus j theta of omega where theta of omega is equals to we know that it is minus alpha omega here what i am having omega n minus 1 by 2 just compare these two omega omega okay and what is alpha n minus 1 by 2 we are having minus omega and minus 1 by 2 so minus omega and minus 1 by 2 minus omega minus omega alpha is n minus 1 by 2 so it is symmetrical around n minus 1 by 2 so this is a symmetrical uh, linear phase frequency response symmetric condition and then is order